Good morning, everyone. Welcome to FHI 360's second Gender 360 Summit. My name is Andrea Bertone, and I'm the director of the Gender Department at FHI 360. I am absolutely thrilled to see all of you here, and thank you so much for coming so early in the morning. We have had such an overwhelming response for, to our invitation for the summit today. And I think it's a testament to three things. First, we've been lucky enough to be able to bring together some of the leading thinkers and doers on gender and international development who will be presenting their thoughts on panels and presentations throughout the day. Second, I think there's a growing desire from so many to work, who work in development to better understand the role that gender plays in the work that we do and our ability to do our work well. And finally, last year's FHI 360 Summit provided both a conceptual and physical space for gender experts and others across technical areas to discuss our shared successes and challenges. And that is why we wanted to have another summit, to build on the exciting and dynamic conversations that we started a year ago and continued throughout the year. I'm delighted to see so many familiar faces and colleagues and also many new faces today. We have a very rich program for you You'll find some useful resources in your blue folder, which I encourage you to take a look at. In addition to our program, you'll find full speaker bios, information about gender at FHI 360, guidelines for the Gender Lounge, and directions to our post-summit networking event, which I hope you will all join us. We highly encourage you to post on social media throughout the day, and you'll find our handles and uh, hashtags on the back of the program. We want to thank our media partner, DevEx, for supporting our social media presence. And the event is being live streamed, and the full footage of today's events will be available widely in the coming week. I would not be able to do the work that I do on a daily basis, nor would we have been able to organize this event without the support of two very important people in this organization, the Chief Executive Officer and the Chief Operating Officer. Two years ago, Patrick Fine, now the CEO of FHI 360, said to me, Andrea, I'm giving you the mandate to make sure that gender is an integral part of everything that we do in this organization. And I gladly accepted that challenge. Patrick has been a rock solid supporter of gender at FHI 360. He was so sorry that he was not going to be able to make it here today that he insisted on videotaping his remarks. So I'd like to introduce Patrick Fine, the CEO of FHI 360, who created this message for us. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us at this second annual Gender 360 Summit. It's great to have so many of the thought leaders and actors on gender equality gathered here together today. We've come a long way in our collective understanding of the role gender plays in development. Promoting female empowerment, male engagement, and more equitable gender norms is now front and center on the international development agenda. The draft UN Sustainable Development Goals include a specific goal on gender equality and social inclusion and human rights for all. One that promotes participation in political and economic life and ending gender-based violence. At FHI 360, we are integrating gender and female empowerment into the DNA of our projects and organizational processes. We know we still have a lot to do to achieve gender equality. That's why we're encouraging our partners to make this one of their key accountability indicators. I know today's discussion is going to be rich and meaningful, and I ask that we all agree on a few simple ground rules to ensure we get the most out of today's discussion. First, 
Let's be honest about the gaps and the challenges. Let's support and respectively challenge one another. Let's definitely talk about what's working well, but not be afraid to expose what isn't working so we can focus on finding new solutions to persistent problems. Integrating gender into every aspect of our work is the right thing to do because we know that it enables women, men, boys and girls to improve their lives, their communities, and the world we live in. It's good development. Thank you again for joining us. I know you'll make this a productive, memorable day. Remember, I told you about two people. So the second key person, the COO, who, when she joined FHI 360 less than a year ago, coming from her post as USAID Mission Director in Peru, immediately indicated to me her support for ensuring that FHI 360 integrates gender at the program level with the highest quality. I'd like to introduce a wonderful advocate for gender, Deborah Kennedy, who is here in person to welcome you. Deborah. Thank you, Andrea, and, and thank you all, and my, uh, good morning. I get to be the third person to welcome you here to FHI 360, but we are just so, so very excited to welcome all of you who are leading the charge to achieve gender equality and female empowerment and, and to make a real difference in the world. Um, I know everybody wants to get to the substance of the conversation, so I'll keep my remarks brief, and I think many of you have already started it at the tables. I know I did. Um, first, I want to, in addition to thanking all of you, to acknowledge that we'll have several speakers who Andrea mentioned, and we want to particularly thank representatives from U.S. and other government um, agencies who have made much of the work that many of us do possible in addition to private contributions. Later in the day, we'll be able to hear the views and remarks of the U.S. Ambassador for Global Women's Issues, Ambassador Catherine Russell. Um, we'll also be joined by USAID Senior Coordinator for Gender Equality and Women's Empowerment, Susan Markham, and Sally Gear, the Head and Strategic Leader on Gender Energy Unit at UK DFID. Welcome to FHI 360. We also have individuals who have traveled across oceans to be here with us, and we're very, I've had the pleasure of meeting some of, the, some of you in person, but let me just call them out here. We have Theo Sowa, who's the head of the African Women's Development Foundation with us today. We have Fikiri Nzoyasenga, a Young African Leaders Initiative Fellow and founder of the Youth Coalition Against Gender-Based Violence in Burundi. It's called Samerera, and I saw Fikiri come in earlier in the day. We have Lori Mitchell, who's the co-founder and co-director of Raising Voices, based in Uganda. We have Emily Esplin, the policy analyst, Women's Rights and Gender Equality Development Assistance Committee of the OECD. And we have Sumita Taneha from FHI 360's office in India here to join us. So welcome to all of you who traveled far. We look forward to hearing your insights. As Andrea mentioned, um, I come, I spent uh, quite a number of years, and some of you know that, at USAID. And I began my career as a project development officer, and it was a time where we did heavy social soundness analysis. And I, I spent a lot of time working with people looking at ethnicity, race, gender issues. And then over time, we sort of lost that discipline of social soundness analysis. And in the last decade, it's coming back. And I think it's very important to our work. I then transitioned to be a democracy and governance officer at USAID and realized that we face tremendous challenges in terms of increasing women's voice and helping others to understand that. Um, but it was often mixed with not only gender, but also ethnicity. And I had a fascinating experience in Guatemala where we brought in a local organization of anthropologists, and they actually internally in our offices ran a workshop to help us discover how we have and manifest biases that we don't even know we had in terms of our, in this case it was our indigenous colleagues, and particularly women from indigenous communities who dress differently. And it was eye-opening, and it was just one of my takeaways. 
Um, most recently, um, I was at USAID Peru before joining FHI 360, and we were struggling with gender, how to integrate gender, and to make sure that our teams understood. And the inevitable point was you create a gender committee, and they're all women. So I'm very happy to see so many men here today because I found that actually the men became some of my biggest allies and champions. And I, I have two stories that I'd just like to share because I, I think it's important. I, I challenge my team leads as I'm challenging those at FHI 360 today to say, how do we get more? How do we achieve more by looking at the mix of people that we're dealing with and understand both gender, identity, and diversity. So it's a whole complex. And the ch person who was the greatest champion told a story. He went to Harvard Business School and he came up with a, he actually researched this and I guess there's a case study about how BMW modified and why you, there are three BMW 323s on the road was that was designed to meet a market for sales to women. So rather than doing something else, they developed a model specifically to appeal to women. And it was starting, it was, he used that to communicate to the team how you could actually get more, you could accomplish more by recognizing the diversity in whoever is your client audience that you want to work on. Um, the second uh, was when we were trying to develop indicators. And again, this, this is about the mix between gender and race, and we developed an indicator in a democracy program that was we want to see how many women we can actually get to a town meeting in indigenous communities in the north of Peru. We weren't very successful. And what we neglected to understand in this case was how the dynamics of that family operated. And once we understood that, we threw out that indicator because the way to increase women's voice and participation was actually to change the dynamics for how we sought input on community decision making. We would present the information, inevitably it would be an audience of all men, and we'd say, tomorrow we wanna to talk about what do we do next? How do we accomplish this? And what would happen? The men would come home, share the information in their, with their families, and they would get advice and insights from their women and they would come back. And we found that the course of action was fundamentally different when we ceased to try to promote decision making in a single site, but actually recognized that the way women engaged in that culture was in a home environment, a safer environment. At some point that made change, but if we really want to do Empower Voice, I think it's very important. I hope today you'll, that will be one of the things you'll explore, the gender, and identity, indigenous issues, and other cultural identities. So we're standing at the brink of a new era of gender equality within the realm of global development, and we are all, I think, here so excited that the UN Sustainable Development Goals will include a comprehensive goal, we hope, on gender equality and women and girls empowerment. And that will hopefully provide a platform, a framework in which we can accomplish much more in terms of gender equality. Um, we need to learn more about what we do, what works. And so I'm going to ask or suggest, in addition to the comments of our CEO, that as you talk today, you might want to explore three questions. What's a key intervention that we most need to fund, to support, to adopt, that would re result in a higher return on gender equality? The second, and this comes to something that is in FHI 360's DNA, is the science. What's the piece of evidence? What evidence do we need to actually convince those who are not as convinced as all of us to, are today of the power of gender equality and female empowerment? And then thirdly, what are the internal or the biggest internal roadblocks within our own institutions to advance gender inequality? And how do we approach these? How do we walk the talk? This was, this is challenging, but so important. And I've had an opportunity to talk to some others and I look forward to exchanging experiences with all of you today on how we model the behavior as leaders. How do we model behaviors and teach others the important role of gender equality and female empowerment? I know the conversation's going to be very, very interesting today and I wish you lots of success. Thank you.